So all you need for this painting is, I have uh, burnt umber, and I have cad red, and I have cad yellow, and I have titanium white, and I also have some ultramarine oh. blue. So what I think we should do down here is paint that red also. That'll make it easy for you to get everything done. Just skip over that line a little bit just so you can see where it transitions. Alright, so then, once you get this done, then you can put the shadows and everything in. And any little details that you like. Little details. Details. <laughs> so just a small flat chiseled edge brush. Synthetic. Synthetic or sable or bristle may not give you the nice edges here. I'm just going to get the shape of the tail. So you can do this, you can approach a painting a few different ways. How I approach a painting is one way, and how Others approach paintings, you know. Um, it's different ways of starting a painting in different ways. And I try to, when I'm teaching it, I, I try to do it so that I make it as easy as I can. And that way you can advance from there. Same with the eye. If you wanted to paint all this black first and put the eye in after, you could do that. So, um, whatever you find easier. These claws here... They're a little hard to follow even on the, on the uh, reference photo, but we're going to try. Let's first of all bring in this branch. That might help us be able to see where those hands are, <laughs> those claws are. So I'm just using a, my flat synthetic. Now if this... I think I'll get a smaller one. So you, if you got three or four around, make sure they're all different sizes. That way, if you find one too big for an area, then you can always try a smaller one. See? Now, I like to have a smaller one than that again. I must look around and see if I have one. So, I'm just going to take pure black on my brush. Pure black. And I'm going to... A look at the branch and the branch is one gray size and we'll just fill it in now like I say I'm doing a video so I try to do um, fast steps too because I don't want you to have to look at a video that's three hours long it could take me three hours to do this one but I try to get the videos done in an hour and a half or less. Sometimes I'll do um, I'll do previews, time lapse videos. I'll do lessons and then I'll put them in playlists. And then I'll do a full painting, a full painting, an hour, hour and a half long. For people who don't mind looking at that. So I try to give different options for my paintings. So you might see a few paintings that um, that are up in different different uh, formats, but they might be the same painting. Because I noticed that some some tutorials are. They're on YouTube and they're all time lapse. And then I wish, I say to myself, I wish you could see that in real time. So if you see any of my time lapse, I will also have a real time full video or a playlist of lessons for that painting. Now I am finding that flat brush a little big. I'm going to try a small round one, but if you find yours okay, then you continue on. But I found it a little bit tedious. It could be where I'm standing up also. Sit down and do your painting if you want. 
you know, whatever makes you comfortable. So I'm just trying to get this here filled in with some black just to get the shape again. Always think about shape. We'll get it. We'll get it. All right, there we go. So I'll have the reference photo for you so that you can look at the claws in case I change something up. Sometimes when I look at a reference photo, I don't use everything that's in the reference photo. I might make it simpler, or I might add things, I might change the colors, okay? All right, so there we go, that's that much. So I have a little tiny round brush for my for the claws. And like I say, if you've got round brushes, have different sizes so that you can uh, fit them to what you're doing at the time. Like you wouldn't use this brush on this big body might use it on the eye, little tiny areas. So the colors for the claws we will use uh, just to start off with, I would say is Burnt Sienna. So Burnt Sienna is a brown, it's like a, a medium brown. You can use cinnamon brown, you can use a brown, add a little bit of, um, a little bit of red to it if you like, or a little bit of yellow and uh, just using black and red. Burnt Umber is a dark brown. You can add a bit of black to it uh, if you don't have these colors yet. So I'm just going to take some of my Burnt Sienna and I'm going to go over those claws my, the best way I can. Okay, and Here, and here, and here. So you have to look closely at the reference photo. So just fill them in first. Okay. So if you look at other videos, some of them don't have any claws, or the claws are, are hidden in between some uh, branches. And or leaves or fruit or whatever okay so I couldn't find a video there's probably some there but I couldn't find anything so I'm trying to give you an idea how to do some claws all right so I will one two this one here so I will put these in for you so I'm just going to put in the one color so that we can get some idea of the shapes that we're looking for. And as you can see, I just painted over. If you could see those lines still, it'd be great. A little bit closer for you. See, so we'll just add the burnt sienna on top of what we have drawn out. All right. And and we'll fill it in with highlights and shadows and all kinds of good stuff. All right, so. Now see that those little open spots there? We can fill them in with the, the red. So we'll fill those in with some, let's get some red just to fill in these areas here. See? Little details, little little things you have to go back over. And here. And I should do it for now. If we need to fill in any more spots, we will. I have a color here called, um, yeah, I have a color here called Vermilion. V-E-R-M-I-L-L-I-O-N, Vermilion. 
it's kind of an orangey reddish color and I took that if you don't have that just use red and yellow to make some orange I took that mixed it with my cad yellow and I got that color there and I'm going to try that for highlights trying to get that nice bright reddish color here but it might be too orangey I'm not sure yet I'm not sure it's not bad you know what do you think it's not too bad so you might say well So you might say, well, why don't you add some white to brighten it up? But I find that white, you'll end up with a, you'll end up with a peach or a pink or, I don't know, just yellow is better, I think. So I'm bringing up off the face here. I'm just going to see where it looks best. And off the head up here. So experiment with your colors that's how you learn and you can take your time because when I'm trying to do a video I got to go with the flow right I can't just stop and try and keep trying different things and you know I can do a video doing that you know uh, working with colors but this is a video that I'm doing for Vicky my Patreon and she requested the Cardinal so if anybody watching this is my Patreon or you want to become a Patreon you can request a video that I'll do for you for you for you for you not yeah <laughs> I'll do for ya all right so It's kind of a nice bright color, isn't it? That's nice. So you can layer it, layer it as much as you want. See how I left the shadow there on back there? So shadows and highlights are very important. And then small details. Let's work on the face there. Every time I work on a piece of um, a painting, I, I'm always making decisions. First decision I have to make is what brush to use. That's the very first, all right? And I'm trying, and then I'll try different brushes. So I'm gonna try this one first. It's a round brush, and I'm going to try that. And this is the thing you have to experiment with your brushes. So I'm going to pick up some black. I'm going to add a bit of burnt sienna to that I think. I might add burnt sienna. I'll try it and see what that looks like. I might even add a little bit of red. Just just experiment with your colors. So we don't want a pure black. That's a pretty color. Look at that. It's nice. So let's uh, try that around the face there. So I'm just going to make some strokes because I'm trying to give it kind of a feathery look. So I want to see that goes up here a little bit. Looks like it. And and does it have any feathers coming out? I wonder. We'll put some out just to give it a feathery look. And we'll take some down into the red. See how it gives it a feathery look? Isn't that nice still wet and I put my finger on it. <laughs> Probably on my sky now. Now, there we go. See that? That gives it a really nice feathery look. Let's paint on my brush, but not overload it, but I got enough on it so that it will move when I want it to move. That's sometimes a bit of a problem some people have. They, they don't put enough paint on their brush. 
and then it dries on really fast. They wonder why it dries really fast and that's one reason why I don't have enough paint. You can fix up anything that looks like it needs to be fixed. Alright. Good. Might add a little more feather out here. You know, you might look at some reference photos and they're all different. The shadows will be different places. The feathers will look different. You know, there's so many different things. Everything that you learn here at uh, this one, when you look at another picture of a cardinal, it might look to look totally different. And then you have to, at least you'll know that how to make the shadows and things, but and the colors to mix. But it's going to be a, a new lesson all over again. So, I'm just going to go into the eye. Now, when you're doing your paintings, you decide what you want to work on next, okay? You don't have to work on the eye next. You don't have to work. You decide yourself. Where do you want to work next? you want to put the shadows in first? Do you want to work on the eye? I'm just picking the eye because um, that's where I want to go next. No particular reason. I just want to go there next. So we will go into the eye. I need to shape it up a bit better than that. So I'm just going to make it more round. Right. And I'm going to put some more black on my little tiny brush. All right. And then I'm going to darken the eye a little bit more. Well, make it a little tiny bit bigger, maybe. These are decisions you have to make. Just take your time. Look at the reference photo. And now, I'm going to put a little dab of... So get yourself a toothpick if you have one. And um, anything with a sharp edge on it. Put some white on there. So, let's make a little dabble do you right here. Cool. Good. Very good. Now, what do we want to work on next? I think I'll try some... Uh, see if I can fix up the beak. So, let's try to do something with the beak. How about we put um, maybe some highlight of... Let's try yellow and a bit of red red is so dominant lots of yellow a lot more yellow than red so i'm just using a small round brush and i may need a smaller one we're going to try this one anyway so, I'm going to try adding some highlight to the beak. Right, and that way I can shape it up a little bit more now, too. That's better. And maybe some down here. I'm just going by a reference photo. It looks like it might be there. Okay. So, what else do we need? don't need much more of anything else. We can darken that little line up there if you want. I'll leave that for now. And I'm going to work on the feathers. Let's use our small round, our round brush again. You can try some different brushes to see what works for you. And our watery, our watery black. Just trying to get a few feathers. Now that's kind of too wet and too dark, so I just wiped it off my tissue. Just gonna bring some feathers down. I'm even gonna bring them up a little bit into that kind of a brighter color that we did. I'm just gonna bring them down here and there. 
So I'm wiping it off my tissue. When I put it on my brush, I'll wipe it off my tissue so it won't be too overpowering. So we got the watery black and brown there, right here. See, it's a bit watery, right? So then it's probably a little too much on that. So just wipe it off in your tissue a little or just dab at it. And then just start putting on these little streaks. Give it a feathery look. Sort of spread them out so they won't look like they're just uh, straight lines. Go up into this up here too. Well, it's not a bad little brush for this. Seems to be working pretty good. Too much paint again. I don't want it to be too dark. It's a little overpowered, so I'll probably put some red back on that. Oh, a little bit of red, take some of that out. And just bring some up here a little bit. Drag it up into that orangey color we made. And go back into our dark feathers, just a few little lines. Short strokes, just short strokes, folks. So make sure that your paint that you're putting on is transparent. That way it won't look overpowering, okay? When you get in here, to darker shadows, you can add a little more paint to it to give it a nice dark shadowy look. That doesn't look too bad there now. Now, I look, like I said, I looked at other videos, and I think um, they have different ways of, of doing it, kind of simplified. This is simplified as best I can, but I want to try and show you different techniques than other people, because if you're looking at videos and everybody's doing the same thing, it's kind of boring. You want to see what everybody's doing different things. You want to see everybody do different things, right? You want to learn different techniques so you can come up with your own. Nice and dark down here. I thickened up the paint a little bit more for here. Get into the shadows. We'll add a little more paint. Probably some burnt dumber. We'll put our shadows in here. Still little strokes. Now, this we're going by this reference photo, so you can look at several different cardinals, and they may not have as many shadows. You know, every everyone is um, the lighting is different, so then your feathers, your shadows, and things are going to be a little different in every picture. So down here, we're just darkening up underneath here. So just find the shadows and put them in. More burnt umber, make it darker. Kind of gives it a feathery look when you make these little strokes. See? Little strokes. Let's bring him down to the edge of the tail here. Nice and dark down there. And then the big tail on the bottom. 
So for the tail, I'm going to make it really simple. I'm just going to take, this is red, so I'm just going to take some red on one corner of my brush and burnt umber on the other corner of my brush. There we go. And I'm just going to get shadows at the same time that I'm putting on my tail. So with the red side to the left, the right side, brown side to the right, you do this. Isn't that nice. Put some more burnt on burnt bread on. And you can flip around. Look, you get shadows at the same time. You can even flip around a couple of times to get some extra. Isn't that cool? Now that's not bad. I think that's pretty cool. Right, and I kept that little, see that little white thing that I left there on the canvas? Leave that, because it looks like the tail is separated. See? The same with uh, up here where we have the feathers. We can put red on one side of a brush. A bit of burnt umber on the other side. Alright, and see? Red. Pretty, I got lots of red on there, don't I? So, um, you can take your brush and you can use the edge there for that shadow on the side there. If that makes it easy for you, you can do it that way. And then you can come back over some of those feathers if you like. And same over here. See all those nice feathers? You can dry brush them on. Just take your flat brush Go into some burnt umber. Wipe it off in your tissue. So there's two ways to do your feathers. Okay, the first way I showed you was with the round brush, and you can also dry brush them on like this, which means you don't have very much paint on your brush. Okay, so just dry brush them on. So put some more paint on your brush. Look, you get tons of paint on there, but wipe it off. Wipe it off. And then whatever's left over, pull it down into the belly. See all those nice little feathery things we got there? So dry brush them on there like that. Do the same thing down here. So use your round brush or you can use the dry brush method.